I was always drawing when I was from, you know, a toddler on up, and I could draw you or the dog. I liked to draw the dog and stuff like that. And cars was I really liked cars to draw, and I still do sometimes. And um, uh, my sister remembers me as always drawing, and I did a lot of, anyway, and I got a lot of strokes for it, you know. But then I got away from it. I got into music, I majored in music in college, and then I didn't do visual art for a long time, but I thought about it a lot. And then I got back into it in the 90s, and I started painting, and I had a few shows, and everything sold really well, so it was encouraging. I mean, not for huge amounts of money, but for decent money. And uh, uh, then I got busy with my career, and stopped for a while, and started back again recently, with, um, and then here lately this past year I had this this one year long project that was very um, absorbing you know I, I put all my energy into that that I had for art so so tell me about your one year project and what the drive behind it was and what you did for it the um, the last uh, year and a half or so my dad started to decline rapidly he, you know he had dementia and uh, it was a really scary thing to go through. My sister and I had to deal with it. You know, he was living by himself and driving, and he'd wind up in places that he didn't know how he got there, and and we didn't know. You know, you don't know when the, when he's going to call, and you know, he was, you know, lucid, but he couldn't keep track of time or anything, and we didn't know what to do. And and there isn't really any manual on what to do, as we found out. You there, you're on your own. And uh, finally, some things happened and he had to go, we were able to get him into full-time residential care because he needed to be watched all the time. And, uh, but that became, I really, it really depressed me. It was a shock to my system to see him go down so fast, you know, because he used to be a brilliant guy. And um, uh, for some reason, out of the blue, one day on my iPad, I just drew this face that had a kind of a, an expression on it and that was, you know, kind of summed up what I was feeling that day. And anyway, I put that on my Facebook feed and people just loved it. And so it made me feel good, you know, and, and I, it made me feel better that day. It was art therapy. I had made something that was mine that didn't have anything to do with the problems in life. You know, it was an, a kind of an, a little escape valve too. Anyway, and then I, I thought, well, I'm just going to do one of these every day for a year. And I wrote that, and so there I was. <laughs> and I really, man, I had no idea how hard that was actually going to be to do in, real, in reality. And um, it was. It was real difficult. I got better at the drawing and stuff right away. And people started expecting these things, and I didn't want to disappoint them. And I wanted them to not be able to predict what I was going to do, and I wanted it to be fun, and I, you know, and but I did it. I did one every day for a whole year, and I, I made some, a few not very good drawings, but mostly pretty good stuff. And I put it all up there on Facebook for the whole world to see. And now I have 365 pieces of art that I can do something with. So, mm -hmm. and and plan to. So. And what was the inspiration for just every day? What did you? Oh, that could be. Uh, well, most of the most of the drawings were just improvised. I would draw until I liked something, and sometimes that it happened really quick, and sometimes it was a struggle. Um, I didn't. Some and sometimes I would have a, a. I would see something in my mind, and I would get that out there, and and. But there were a few few nights that were really difficult, and I through the whole thing I had fear that I was just going to dry up, that you know I wouldn't make it. There would be some night that I just plain couldn't put anything out there. That, but that didn't really happen. I mean, in retrospect, there were a few I would like to do over again. But you know, that's that's just the way life is. They're all basically first drafts. Mm -hmm. So um, then there were there was. There were two, uh, some people asked me if I would draw a friend of ours who was turning 90 and surprise him with it. And I thought that was a good idea. And so I did that. And one night, well, it was the night that Breaking Bad 
was over was the finale of Breaking Bad, and I loved that show, and I did a group portrait of the cast of Breaking Bad, but it was very stylized. I didn't actually look at them to draw it. And uh, other than my friend, I did a likeness of him. And then at the end of the series, I did a likeness of myself. I, I thought, well, that really is the best way to end it. It's here. So what do you think you took away from the project? Mm -hmm. Well, off the top, you know, I'm somebody that can really do something large, and and I can I can work through fatigue. There was a time where I thought I'd got to stop and take a break, but I had come so far that I didn't. I'm you know obviously I'm I'm really proud of myself for doing that. Mm -hmm. it, 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 um, it it was something in it that belongs to me, and and I did it, and it really shows. Even though there's so a bunch of images in there, they they uh, there's a consistency to it, and I tried to do have a variety every day, but you can tell on almost every one of them who who drew it, without any with no doubt, I think. So moving forward, what's next in your art development? Or are you going to go back and redo them? Do you have plans to continue the project or to build off of it? Oh yeah, see the thing now that it's over is. is is the first things first is the website and I happen to be one of Marion's web developers so I can have a free website but <laughs> and still it's a lot of and you know in other words I can build my own website but I'm like the shoemaker who wears who's barefoot you know I do this all day long so I don't do my own stuff at night but that's what I'm doing these nights is getting this cataloged and out there and and also um, a ability to download and purchase prints you know because they're all high resolution and so I'm I'm getting that all set up in my spare time now and um, I also want to um, do some of them as paintings none of I don't I don't plan on copying anything directly but there were some good ideas in there that I want to see bigger and on canvas and people like to buy a painting a, you know a thing and that you know you can or show or something like that and there are there is someone who has a gallery that has mentioned possibly trying to do a show here in Houston so we'll we'll see about that and I did get to be in a small show this summer with two of the pieces so it's it's a story it's, it's been a thing for that maybe possibilities of there of, of some some doors that might open up in my life changing a little bit for the better because of it well that is awesome is there anything that I haven't like mention that you want to talk about or a question mm. I have asked? Uh, no, I, no, really, I think the questions were really well thought. That I, I don't know what else to add to it. The, uh, you know, I, I learned a lot of skill with the iPad too, you know, in all of this. And so that's an additional takeaway from it is that I'm, I'm kind of a virtuoso of, of at least one app, <laughs> maybe two. <laughs> were they all done on the iPad? Every single one. There were. I did use. I did draw on paper sometimes and photograph those, and then go in the iPad and and uh, change things, erase things, add layers of color and texture and stuff like that. Or you know, or but mostly everything. And then uh, as the project, I mean, I did a lot more of that in the early stages. Towards the end, I was. I was really trying to keep it purely digital, mm -hmm. and that, there was very little drawing or other textures, you know, other, you know, things involved in that. But you can you can do that on the iPad like any computer, you, and we do that in design all the time. Is you, to make texture, you know, is and you know you get sources source files for that, and you get and you would get them from either you know public domain websites or something, but. Or do it yourself, make it yourself on some other thing. Okay. So. Interesting. All right. Do you think that's good, or do you have anything, Jose? You have anything, or? I guess the only question I have is, what would you say to someone that would want to take on a task like this, where they would, you know, this was definitely a big task, mm -hmm. a part of your life, mm -hmm. but something that's very time consuming. What kind yeah, of I would you? say, you know, because if I had known how hard it was going to be, I would not have started it. So you can't think about how hard it's going to be. You have to think about just doing it and or what do you want at the end of it? Because it, it's a good thing to have at the end, 
but yeah, you have to be prepared to give up. I had to make cuts in my life to do it. No, I didn't get to exercise as much. I didn't, I didn't miss out on anything important, but I had to be home in time to do one, and it usually took one to two hours, you know, so I would, um, but I'm, you know, I like to exercise, and I didn't, get, I didn't exercise as much when this was going on. That was the only thing that I could cut back on. But then, you know, uh, really, uh, I, I would just say you got to go for it. At some point when it gets right down to, the, to, down to it, all you've got is these little voices that say, no, it's too much, it's too hard, it's too long, it's too big. That stuff is what keeps us from starting. <laughs>